Hi guys. So today's video is going to be my August wrap up. I did tweak my TBR slightly as August went on, but I'm going to start with the book that was August's monthly buddy read, and that was A Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. I was really happy to see that so many of you who participated in the buddy read ended up really, really enjoying this book. That made me super happy. For those of you who have no idea what this book is about, it is in a world where there were people who had abilities called augers, and then there were people who had abilities called the gifted, and augers are essentially wiped out now, and the gifted are still around, but they're definitely discriminated against, and there are a lot of restrictions placed on them so that they can't really use their power freely. From there, it is a multiple point of view story, so the plot is somewhat meandering depending on whose point of view you're with, but ultimately there is this kind of looming power, this bad thing that all the characters are kind of working against. And one particular group of our characters are, it's kind of a quest story, they're on their way somewhere, so if you're a big fan of quest stories, probably want to check this one out because that's a lot of what it is, but if you're like, oh, I hate traveling stories. I don't know if you'll love this one. I personally did not dislike the book, but I don't know that I loved it either. There were elements of the book that I really, really enjoyed, and then there were some elements of just the storytelling itself that weren't quite up my alley. I'd say that was because to me this book felt more plot driven rather than character driven and I absolutely adore character driven stories and for me I kind of thought through it and I wondered if I placed any of our main characters in each other's situations would those situations play out any differently and for me they should because you know, a character is supposed to have a fairly distinct personality. So in my mind, if I took one character and I put them in another character's situation, I would think that that situation would play out very differently. But when I thought through it in regards to this book specifically, I don't know that the story would have been any different. It just would have been that character in that situation rather than a different one. I still highly recommend this book if you are a fan of fantasy, especially if you are a fan of plot-driven fantasy, if you're a fan of quest stories or traveling stories. And despite its size, the writing style is not dense whatsoever, so the writing style is very direct. It makes it a little bit a little less intimidating for people who are a little scared of giant fantasy books. Next up, I read a little bit of the manga Blade of the Immortal. This was my husband's pick for this last month because it was his birthday and I asked him to pick something that he wanted me to read for his birthday so that we could connect and chat about it. And the premise of the story is that there is a samurai who is done some stuff that wasn't the greatest and now he has kind of vowed to right his wrongs and in doing this he has become immortal until he can right these wrongs. In his efforts to right these wrongs he meets this young girl named Rin whose family was killed and she kind of hires him basically to sort of be her bodyguard and help her get justice. This first one is technically the first omnibus which if I'm not mistaken has the first three or four volumes in it so I read the first volume and I will say the first volume is a little disorienting. My husband did tell me that that was going to happen. He is further along in the story, so he says that it gets a little more grounded. So I do plan on continuing the series. I did like what I read, even though the beginning is a little all over the place and is a little hard to follow. I still really enjoyed it. Plus, the art style is so, so cool. Next up, I read both An Ember and the Ashes and A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. The first one was pretty easy for me to get through, and... I don't know, I'm getting so tired of having started so many series and then not having completed them. Are any of you guys like that? You look at your bookshelves and you're like, well, what have I even finished? So I decided to go ahead and pick up the second one in the month also. I think I liked the second one more. Did a non-spoiler review for the first one and then I also did a book chat for the second one. I enjoyed them both. I definitely found them very entertaining. They are extremely character driven. They're kind of the exact opposite of the shadow of what was lost. These books are very, very much focused on the characters and half the time I'm like just following along with whatever they gotta do. Stuff comes up, they gotta handle the situation. It's one of those stories. I don't feel like it's a, there's this bad guy, let's get this bad guy. There is some of that, the main character that's a female, there's a couple of main characters, Laya in the first one. Her goal is to try and save her brother who's been taken and then the main character that's a guy named Elias is kind of in the first one, he's, he's having to fight through these trials to possibly become the new emperor. I'm definitely finding this series entertaining, though. I'm definitely intrigued as to what happens next, but I don't know if I'm riding the hype train crazy hard like some people. I know this series is extremely, extremely hyped, and everybody's losing their minds over it, and I think it's definitely 
good. I mean, the writing is good. The story is gripping, I'd say, but I don't know that it's like my next new favorite series. So I don't, I'm not saying that to try and be cool and like not think it's awesome or something. It's more of just, I know, I know when books get crazy, crazy hyped, it can kind of ruin it for people when they go to read it and they're like, well, what's everybody freaking out about? I mean, it was pretty good. And then it kind of makes them think negatively about the book when they wouldn't have if there hadn't been hype. So I guess what I'm saying is if you haven't read the series because you're afraid of that very thing happening, but you're interested in getting into it, maybe pick it up, pretend the hype doesn't exist, and you'll probably like it more. Now I'm gonna go against everything I just said because can all of you just go read Scythe and Thunderhead? I finally got around to reading Thunderhead. I don't know what took me so long, but oh my gosh, I just really want to talk to everyone about this series. I'm sure a lot of you already are aware of the premise of this story, but the idea is that the world has no war, has no diseases, has nothing really threatening it except for over overpopulation. And so to prevent overpopulation from happening in this utopian-like society, there is a group of revered individuals that are called scythes, and they go around and they kill people. First off, I love me a morbid premise. When I heard that premise, I was like, sign me up, that sounds fantastic. But I will admit, I was nervous because it was getting really hyped, everybody was saying how much they loved it, and I was like, oh, please be as good as everyone thinks it is. And I remember really distinctly, one of you guys commented on one of my videos, and you're like, I don't mean to like, hype it because I know that can ruin it but they're like but it's so good like I remember one of you feeling that same way and I know of course that not every book is going to be loved by every person there will be some of you who pick up Scythe and just aren't a fan and that's fine but man ah this <laughs> I really like this series I think what's really fantastic about it is first off it is sold in the young adult section but it's probably because the two main characters are young adult aged and the writing style is so accessible but it raises so many amazing questions about mortality and what it means to be alive and it just i don't mean to make it sound so like pretentious and stuff but it, it's like it has some level of pretentiousness but in the best way possible while also being extremely accessible and easy to get into i don't know if that made any sense i have a non-spoiler review for the first one i have a book chat now for this second one. Oh man the ending of the second one oh anyway yeah just if you're interested in it, you should go read Scythe. The last book I got around to this month is And I Darken by Kirsten White. I picked this up because, one, I bought it a while ago. There was one of these little things of recommended by the local bookstore's staff members for this book forever ago, and I was like, that sounds cool. It's a gender swap of Vlad the Impaler. And then not only was my husband's birthday this last month, but my friend Jashana's birthday was this month. Also, she has her own channel. She's, like, the funniest person ever. You guys should all go subscribe to her. She's lovely but i asked her i had a few books on my shelf that i hadn't read that i know she's a huge fan of and i was like hey which of these three books i know you love these ones which one do you think i should read and she picked this one and she was like i just i don't know i feel like more people <laughs> should read this book and it is very much historical fiction so if you're going into this book thinking you are going to learn about history you're not i also did a whole non-spoiler review for this book and I get a lot more into the plot and the writing and the characters and the accuracy of it being historical fiction or whatever, but I really, really loved it. Anyway, that is it for all the books that I got around to in the month of August. If you were part of the buddy read for The Shadow of What Was Lost, I will have the book chat up for that tomorrow, so by the time this goes up, the next day. Saturday is when it will go up. But anyway, as always, let me know if you guys have read any of these books. Let me know what your thoughts were on them. Happy reading. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Bye.